Hello. My opposition to Sarah discussed the American Clean Energy Act and talked about a nationalized cap and trade system. First, before I start my debate, I would like to, to explain it to you from my side. The American Clean Energy Act was a proposed bill in 2009. Its main premise is implementing a cap and trade policy in order to open a new market and reduce greenhouse gases. The proposed cap and trade policy involves a system where the government would put a cap on the number of greenhouse emissions businesses can emit. The government would administer the administrate permits or licenses to pollute to these businesses, and then the businesses would trade these permits amongst themselves. The first part is fairly straightforward. The government will set a limit for how much carbon emissions can be released into the atmosphere per year. Next, they would administer permits to companies that produce these emissions. These permits are basically legal forms allowing companies the right to pollute a certain amount. The amount of emissions that businesses currently produce would determine how many of these permits they are to receive or pay for. The final step in the nationalized cap and trade system is the trade. This step is very, very complex, and even the financial experts proposing this bill are uncertain of how it will be administered. Basically, companies who try to reduce the carbon emissions can sell their leftover permits to other companies who need it. This part of the process causes problems, which my partner and I will further discuss later. Therefore, I'd like to claim that we both are against the adoption of a federal cap and trade policy as outlined in the American Clean Energy and Security Act. Congress should not pass any cap and trade bills pre presented now or in the future because it will only lead to more economic and environmental harm. I would first like to oppose Sarah's proposition and state that it is not necessary for the United States to establish a new cap and trade system in order to address the excess of greenhouse gas emissions, as our current system is more than efficient. The United States Environmental Protection Agency has been our pre existing system for regulating envir environmental law since 1970. Its goal is to set national standards and enforce Oh, excuse me, and enforce environmental regulation. It does this by proposing and amending laws passed by the Congress. For example, as Sarah mentioned, the Clean Air Act was implemented and is currently regulated by the EPA. According to this organization, the Clean Air Act is the law that defines the EPA's responsibility for protecting and improving the nation's air quality and the stratospheric ozone layer. This Clean Air Act also has a permitting system similar to the cap and trade system which allows for responsible companies to emit a certain amount of greenhouse gas emissions. According to the EPA, operating permits include information on which pollutants are being released, how much may be released, and what kinds of steps the source's owner or operator is required to take to reduce the steps, or sorry, to reduce the pollution. Permits must include plans to measure and report the air pollution emitted. The U.S. already has a cap system of national environmental regulation through the EPA, and Congress is constantly amending this law to adjust it to our current situation. So in other words, don't fix what isn't broken. According to the Center for American Progress, since its enactment, the Clean Air Act has reduced overall air pollution, while U.S. gross domestic product has risen by 207%. The benefits to the American people of the Clean Air Act rules mostly health benefits, including asthma reduction, lower lung cancer rates, and greater productivity, are expected to reach nearly $2 trillion in 2020, exceeding any cost by more than 30 to 1. Therefore, it's not necessary to create an entirely new system within our government. Implementing this proposed cap-and-trade system would cost us so much time and money that any benefits stemming from it would be enormously overshadowed. According to Peter Montague, a co-founder and director of the Environment, Environmental Research Foundation, buying and selling rights to pollute will create an enormous private bureaucracy, a trading, a trading exchange, supported by an army of bankers, lawyers, engineers, etc. The first year of a cap-and-trade program is estimated to create a new market in pollution rights worth $220 billion. I would next like to talk about how a cap and trade policy will harm our community more than help it. This proposed trade cap and trade policy is at fault when it comes to mainly when it comes to the trade part. There are two aspects of this proposed system that are problematic, and they are known as free permitting or offsets. Um, and offsets, excuse me. 
Green permits are given to companies who need more permits in order to produce greenhouse gas emissions. This gave the cap and trade system the nickname of cap and giveaway because the system just gives businesses excess permits for free. This gives large businesses the opportunity to pollute the earth even more, defeating the initial purpose of the cap and trade system. The next problem with the cap and trade system is called offsetting. Every company who reduces their use of pollutants has leftover permits that they can sell to, their, to other companies. So in a sense, they offset each other. The problem comes in the implementation. This system allows for cheating to occur, where businesses can sell empty permits that are created when false information is given and carbon has already been released into the atmosphere. According to two EPA lawyers with more than 20, with both more than, both with more than 20 years of experience, the only result of an offset program is an increase in greenhouse gases that shifts emission, the emissions from one source to another. Therefore, companies can say that they're reducing carbon emissions when they're really not, and more carbon is being released into the atmosphere, defeating the initial purpose again. I would now like to mention California's cap and trade system, known as AB32. As you all know, California's economy is currently one of the worst economies in the world, not to mention the United States. According to Tom McClintock, a California representative, in his speech right after the House of Representatives passed, passed HR 2454, which is the American Clean Energy Act. I have watched over these years as AB 32 has dramatically deepened California's recession. Our unemployment rate has risen two points above the national average since the implementation of this bill. AB 32 promised us new green jobs when the exact opposite has happened. Economists have described our job market using the words new depression. If this AB 32 has failed in California's economy, the largest economy in the United States. How can we expect it to be a success on a national level? It doesn't make sense to implement a brand new system that has been proven not to work with so many flaws and with so many flaws. We should instead continue to support the EPA and their many successes. Thank you. <coughs>